In this video, we take a look at the master section in Tractor Pro 2. Find out more coming up. Thank you for watching P.TV where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. Now let's get into the video. So in this video, let's take a look at the global section or what I like to call the master section in Tractor Pro 2. So right now I actually have uh, the global section hidden. So to show it, go ahead and head to preferences. Then under the global settings, right here at the top, there's global section. Just go ahead and have that selected. And then this will pop up right here. So this is the global section. It's basically broken up into three different parts. You have your left and right sections right here that uh, switch between effects or a secondary uh, function. And then in the middle, you have your loop recorder. <clears throat> so let's start with the loop recorder. This was added when Native Instruments introduced the Tractor S4. And this is basically uh, a loop recorder you can use uh, for recording small routines or, you know, stacking sounds uh, to make beats or different loops for performance purposes. You can actually select the number of beats right here that you want to loop. Right now it's on four beats, but you can actually go ahead and increase or decrease that. You have, you can do that right here by using the size button. So right there you can see you go to 32 bars, which is a, uh, I mean 32 beats, I'm sorry, that's eight bars. Right under that you have your record and play functionality, <clears throat> which lets you start recording and then you can click it again to stop the recording and then play it back using the play button. Right here on the left side, you have your dry wet, which basically takes whatever input you have right here. This is the input selector. And then you can choose how much of that input you want to record. So say you're recording your first layer, you might want it all the way up. And for instance, let's say you're doing a kick and snare uh, drumming routine. Now, when you want that, add the hi-hat for the second uh, pass through, you might want to lower it a little bit and then record it. That way the hi-hat's a little bit lower than the kick and snare and you can still build a beat without everything kind of clashing. And then say on top of that you add a trumpet stab or something like that, you can go ahead and mix that in as well. Right here on this side, you have the actual volume of the loop recorder as well as um, quantize and such right here. So you can actually control the uh, volume that's playing through the loop recorder uh, most controllers that have loop um, the loop recorder function is basically the S4 uh, have these knobs right here, so you can this knob so you can actually control it on the hardware, which is pretty cool. Next, we have the the two side sections right here. These are where your effects are uh, located in Tractor Pro 2. So right now I have it in single effect mode, but you can switch it to group effect mode. So you can have three different effects per side. You can select whatever effect you want, and then you get uh, the knob to control the one function of the of the effect, as well as an on/off button, and then a global uh, dry wet. Notice right here for the flanger, you know, you get a percentage for the delay. You have timing. It really depends on um, whatever uh, effect you have selected. You get different parameters. There's not uh, necessarily set for um, every effect. It's not, you know, across the board. So you, it's really cool to dig into all these effects. I mean, Tractor has some great sounding effects, probably some of the best sounding effects as far as DVS is concerned. And being able to do three on this side, and then you can have either one or you can switch this to group effect mode and have six all together. So you can effectively have six different effects playing at the exact same time, which is pretty crazy and the ability to turn them all on and off and dry wet uh, is pretty cool. Some great control right there. And then if we switch back to single effect mode, you'll see that instead of having three different effects, you have the one effect and then you have three different parameters for each effect. And just like in group effect mode, the uh, th three parameters can change. <clears throat> as well as those parameters, you have these buttons underneath it, which give you some different functions. The one function that each uh, effect has is this button right here, and that's the reset. Now the reset's really cool 
And the way I use that is if I have, for instance, my delay, what I, I usually do is I'll set it up once because I use the delay as an uh, echo out. And you, that's done by switching this mode right here to freeze, which basically gives you the echo out instead of a normal delay. Then I can have, you know, my settings dialed in. I don't want the filter. I want, uh, let's say, quarter beat or such, you know. Then what I can do is hit save snapshot. Now, say if I go ahead and tweak some stuff, if I hit reset, it resets to whatever you had the snapshot of for that effect. So it effectively gives you uh, a save button for once you get your effects dialed in the right way and the way you like it. Your effects are dialed in and it's saved. So no matter if I close a program or open it back up, I can just hit that reset button and your effects settings come right back. Super fast, super easy. Uh, I wish Serato DJ had this functionality. Uh, like I mentioned before, Scratch Live used to have the ability to save your effects settings. So please, Serato, bring that back. We miss it. <laughs> and then uh, on top of the effects banks on each side, you have your secondary functions right here, which are underneath. On the left side, you have your master clock section, which gives you the master tempo um, and whatever is running as the master BPM. So say you have a deck loaded and you've assigned this deck to master, this BPM right here will follow this BP, uh, whatever BPM is named master. Also, you can set a global master tempo. So say you don't, you want your decks to all sync to one single clock, it'll sync to this one right here. So you get that master going. What's also cool about this is that it also has a, uh, a click track, which you don't see in many uh, DVSs. Uh, Tractors had the click track for a long time because it was one of the first DVSs to really push the whole beat gridding idea. So one way to beat grid your tracks is you can have the click playing at whatever BPM you have set, and then you can adjust the beat grid to the, the tick or click of the track, uh, just like you would use it um, if you're you know playing guitar or playing uh, drums, you would have this be the thing that you follow. So you would have your uh, beat grid follow the click track, which is really cool. Also, what's cool about uh, this master section, what's important is that if you're using Ableton Link, if you're having a tractor be the master and not the slave for Ableton Link, I would suggest using this BPM, uh, the master BPM, as what you're syncing to, depending on what other software you're syncing your tractor to. Um, just makes it a lot cleaner um, as far as like performance is concerned because you'll have that constant BPM and um, you're not gonna be doing as much nudging if you're doing a really complicated uh, Ableton Link style um, performance. Then, on the right side, this is where the uh, audio recorder is hidden for Tractor Pro 2. So if you want to record your set and you're wondering where to get that done, it's right here on the right-hand side. Just go ahead and click on this cassette tape. And then um, right you have your gain so you can you know dial in your volume and make sure it's set right. And your record button and you're good to go. So um, if you, I know that I was wondering where the record function was for a while until like, I learned that it's just hidden right underneath the effects. So cool to have, always awesome to be able to record your sets. Super easy, especially with something like any of the controllers that Native Instruments puts out or the Tractor Z2. You can just select your audio source, record right in, saves it to WAV file, and you're good to go. So that's a look at the master section in Tractor Pro 2. So question of the day, which part of the master section is most important to you? Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And as always, if you found this video useful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And thank you for watching P.TV, where you'll find tips, tricks, and tutorials for DJs and music performers. See you next time.